Welcome back to another episode of Chicks University. You guys, we have such an exciting episode. If you don't know, the college nationals for cheer and dance were this past weekend. I know if you're watching cheer, it's probably confusing because it's not Daytona. There's another nationals that goes on. And for colleges, they're basically either going to NCA or UCA. Every single year, all the colleges go to the same ones. So... UCA is the one that I'm talking about this whole entire show, and I have your newest national champions, the LSU Tiger Girls, joining me on this episode, and it's so, so special because their story is just absolutely amazing. They're a dance team, and they haven't won in 12 years, and were not allowed to compete last year because of COVID, so... I wanted to have the girls on just to recognize them for winning the national championship, which is absolutely amazing. Now they're blowing up on TikTok. If you haven't, you've probably seen their routine and maybe not even recognized it. Their routine music is trending on TikTok. People are recreating their dances on TikTok. They're just becoming a national sensation for one of the most iconic routines I've ever seen in my entire life. And I had so much fun talking with them and I know you guys are going to absolutely love hearing about them and their journey and their story it's so interesting to listen to a bunch of female athletes and just like how the school treats them and how people recognize them because every single day is a day stepping forward that we need to make progress and having our female and male athletes treated the exact same and female and males all over the world but especially athletes there's a lot of inequality with the treatment and funding and support that they receive. And the LSU Tiger Girls were just like, hey, you know what? If we're not getting help, we're going to do it our damn selves. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And without further ado, let's get these national champions on Chicks here. You guys, I am so excited right now. I can't even put it into words. The LSU Tiger Girls. Hold on. Let me update it. The recent crowned national champion LSU Tiger Girls are here on Chicks U, baby. Woo! Everyone at home, just give them a round of applause. They deserve it. They deserve it. Girls, introduce yourselves. Let's get to know our wonderful, beautiful. I'm like, how do I have such pretty girls on my show right now? Let's go. Introduce yourselves. How long you've been dancing in your life? How long you've been on the Tiger Girls team? Let's get right into it. Well, my name is Kalia Kohler. I'm from Egan, Minnesota. Um, I'm a junior captain this year. And yeah, so I've, I'm from Minnesota. So that's a pretty far away. I think only me and McKenna in this call are out of state. Um, but yeah, I've been dancing since I was three years old, been doing competitions since then as well. So um, after high school, we kind of did tryouts with this group. We recruitment didn't start, so we got tried out for this, and then um, we've been working for a national championship since then. So it's been really exciting. Love, love. I also <laughs> love Minnesota, so I'm like, hey, girl. <laughs> I'll go. Okay, um, my name is London Daniel. Um, I'm from Hammond, Louisiana, so just 45 minutes out of Baton Rouge, um, where we are. So, um, yeah, I have been on the team for four years, and um, this is my second year being captain. So, um, I've been dancing since I was 18 months, so long time. Um, and yeah, like Kalia said, we've just been working towards this. This is my fourth year working towards it, so. I couldn't think of a better way to just kind of cap it off and um, go out with a bang. So it sounds like you were literally born. You were like, yep, I'm going to go dance at LSU. <laughs> like, did you even consider another school or another sport? No, Not at all. No, this was the only school I applied to. So <laughs> do you have a family like family rooted LSU? Yeah, all of the siblings went here. Um, dad went here. Yeah. So it was kind of kind of where I was going to go always. So. It, I it love worked. that. Wait, do you have an older sister? Did she, I do. Did she I dance? Do. She did. She was on um, the Golden Girls, which is a different dance team here at LSU. But she she did do that and kind of did the a similar path as me, just on a different dance team. So okay. kind of followed in her footsteps. Kinda. What's different? What's the Golden Girls and what's the Tiger Girls? Oh, I feel like you, I just by the names, I'm like, you guys are fiercer. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're with the band. They do football, um, strictly football, and they're like an extension of the Tiger Band. Um, and whereas we are part of athletics, so we'll do kind of all different sports, football, basketball, um, gymnastics, baseball. And then our big competition is obviously our nationals, which is where we just um, competed at. So right. So you're competing. you're like the competition team. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Got it. OK, good to know. I thought it was like just you guys. So that's good to know. Yes. All right. So nice to meet you, girly pop. Who's next? <laughs> I'll go next. So I'm McKenna Dixon. I'm from Chandler, Arizona. This is my second year on the team. So I'm a sophomore here. And um, this was actually Brielle and I's first college national since we weren't allowed to go last year, which it was super. Oh, we will. We're going to get all into it. Don't you worry. (laughs) Yeah. So it was super exciting. We worked so hard for it. And it was just super, super cool to like finally be able to go to a college nationals and experience that because you always like watch them and especially after watching like the tiger girls from 2020 i was like that's literally what i want to do and so it was just super super cool to be able to experience that like in person oh so you're one of the babies (laughs) i'm like so mushy i just want to give you a hug i'm brielle i'm uh also a sophomore basically a freshman this year because we just are getting to do football and all the different games and it's like finally a normal year so we're technically newbies this year but I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, so I'm like 45 minutes away, just like London, but like the opposite direction. And my whole family went to UL, University of Louisiana. And <gasps> oh my yeah, God, are so you the traitor? But <laughs> all growing up, my mom said that I would be the one to leave. I thought I would go further, but I knew I wanted to come here. Since oh my I God, I am obsessed with your accent. I'm like, <laughs> I'm the most like Northern girl ever. And I'm like, please just keep talking. Like you have the most aesthetically pleasing accent I've ever heard I love it so much thank you I'm actually very Cajun but whenever I'm with these girls over here I can change a little bit. <laughs> oh my god I love it so kind of like walk me through what I guess this is for the older girls then like what a normal year is like like your week how, how your year starts you go into school in the fall what the schedule is in the fall like day by day week by week like leading up to competition season So I can just touch on like the practices and stuff and then London, if you want to go into like games and things like that, but yeah, um, we practice. So in the fall or actually starting with the summer, we kind of have like all all year round sport. So we don't have an off season except like May and June when you're off of school, when nothing's going on. And then we get back right into it in July. Mm -hmm. So we have when are tryouts tryouts. Well, they usually like when I got on the team, they were in May, Um, But now we're starting a different recruiting process. So they already submitted their videos in December for the next group coming in. Um, And so they're kind of December to May. That's a huge difference. Yes, Mm -hmm. it's very big. It's very big. So you're like, we're legit now. We got to start way earlier. We have way (laughs) more girls coming in. Yes. Yeah. So they they've been doing that while we've been kind of in national season, kind of doing games and stuff. So they've been already recruiting and we had some girls come in and look at the school. So they started that already, so we won't have tryouts this year, but um, we'll probably get into stuff even earlier since tryouts were kind of pushed earlier into that recruiting process. But we have about two weeks in July where we just come for camp, um, and that's just like kind of any sport coming in for camp in July. Um, learning Is new that like still part of tryouts or the teams decided by then? Um, in me and London's years, it was more of a like phase one, phase two type of thing. So I wasn't, we weren't really on the team until August when we kind of made those final cuts since they were doing it by cut. So it. I'm like, for the people that watch Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, I'm like, you're yeah. in training camp then you can still get cut. You can still get yes. called into the office. <laughs> yes. And it's still kind of like that. Um, they're trying to see how you mesh and mold with the team and things like that. Um, they're hoping not to cut anyone, especially with this recruitment style. But up until school starts, really, it's kind of you never know until um, you're kind of proving yourself on the team in those mm-hmm. summer months. So, yeah, we go into camp. We come back in August. It's That's kind of like the final cut round. It. It's just camp. Um, and then we stay here for the rest of the year, basically. So we're not home much for the out-of-state kids. Um, I go home like May and June, but then after that, I'm, I'm here mostly the whole year. So after that, we have our normal practices, which are 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, but that varies obviously. And then going into our national season, it's every single day from like 8 a.m. to who knows. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever yeah. coach feels like it, she's like, yeah. oh, you guys look good today. Now you can end. <laughs> yes. So. so how many girls do you usually take the team? And then there is there like a how many actually compete? Um, we this year we took 20 girls um, and then London, there's 18 can take the mat or 16. So this year we did 16, um, but it kind of just ranges. We've done 14 before, but there's some um, flexibility. Yeah, there is. is it as like, is it making that? Tell me you guys watched here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm like, we get it. I'm like, everyone gets it. We're trying to make Matt. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of like, it's just kind of like, um, whatever the number that is decided it's, um, people are chosen for that dance. So not everybody will dance on the nationals mat, um, but we do take two routines. So um, it kind of is like, you can dance in one and not the other, uh, vice versa, kind of stuff like that. But yeah, it definitely is like, we we try out, I guess you could say to make the mat. So not everybody will compete on the mat for both dances. Mm -hmm. So how is it like, I, I think of this team in like two ways. I think of it as you guys doing stuff for yourself and then you guys doing stuff to support the other sports teams at your school. Like how divided is your time between the two? I would say that is a very good way to look at it, honestly, yeah. because that's how we kind of think of it too. It's like um, you take your you time and then you have like oh, yeah. the we time for everybody else. <laughs> I would say obviously like 90 part 90 percent of our season is like doing the part where we support the other teams so um that takes up obviously a lot more time just because that's um football season basketball season that's kind of our main chunk of time that we're doing training for that so that takes up a bunch of time but honestly when national season comes around we try to focus on just devoting as much time to this while still um being super present in the basketball games like even even when we're in national season, the basketball games don't stop. And so I think that's a really cool part of our program is like, we don't stop training for other, like us supporting other sports just because we're working on our, what our competition, our main competition um, portion of our season is. Right. So, and then coach yeah. is like, oh, that's extra practice. Like if basketball makes it further, it's extra practice for us. But I just want to point out, I didn't even think you realized like how important it was that you just said that you said you spend 90% of your time cheering on other teams and 10% of that time mm -hmm. goes to yourselves. And you guys are the national champions, like period, <laughs> period. <laughs> Other teams get 100% me time. You guys are like, no, we're going to go give you guys some love. And then we're still going to rain on everyone's parade and win nationals. Bye. Yeah, and Bye asses. A lot of, a lot of people don't realize as well. Cause they see us at our, most of our exposures at basketball and football games. So they they see us doing that. They're like, Oh, how's cheer. And how's this when, and then we have to go back and correct them nicely. We're dancers and we also have a different season and we're also supporting other sports. So I think it's nice that I think more people are starting to realize, especially after the win um, that we do do di different things. Um, but like Lennon said, it's not, not as known that dancers are doing all these types of things and competing and trying mm -hmm. to win just like every other sport on campus. Mm -hmm. Wait, I got confused again. I, so you guys do do the football games and Golden Girls. So what's the difference? Do you do like the whole game and they do halftime or vice versa? So they're up there. They stay with the band. Oh, like, they dance in front of the band and we're on the sidelines. Okay. And they do half times. And okay. Stuff. So you're popping it on the sidelines. And we pop it on. <laughs> Love. How was this football season? Let's go with the newbies. How was the football season? It was so much fun. It was everything we've ever dreamed of because last year, me and Kenna were both in one game. We were in the spring game and it was like 25% capacity. Like no one. That's really the only one you got to do. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> the only one we, the only this girl, one we, she's gonna take my whole heart away when we end this call. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that like me and McKenna got to do, the older ones got to do more, but coach picked them because they had more experience. And is was that because of COVID? Like only some of the team could do it. Yeah, it was less of us that got to do it, and it was. Correct me if I'm wrong, London. Y'all didn't get to do every game, or y'all did do every game. We did. We just couldn't. There was like a lot of restrictions, like obviously. Yeah. 
mask and stuff, but we weren't, we weren't on our normal spot. We had to like go on a different part of the field. We couldn't be on the field with them. Right. So. But now everyone does every game. Now, how many, 11? Now she picks a certain amount. So it's kind of like making that, but for the game. So you oh. might have to, yeah. So you might not be in a game like the next week, but you're in one this week and it kind of just changes. Is it evenly rotated or it's like a constant competition to get to do the football games? It's pretty even, but it's, it's still, we still I feel like sometimes it's do. not. London's giving yeah. me like a half smile. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's normally, she'll normally take from like the older ones and like. Got it. That makes movie. sense. Seniority. She's like, you guys have years, you have national championships. Ellis, you will probably win in a year or two. It'll be fine. <laughs> Wait, so have you guys been there for a national championship? London? In I London. Just miss it. Oh, oh, how was that? I mean, football. Obviously, everyone's been there for a day on national championship. How was the football national championship? Yeah, we didn't I get was, to go to the yeah. I was a freshman that yeah. year, and London was a sophomore. So it was great, so, but London probably knows a little more since I was a baby that year. <laughs> well, only our seniors got to actually go to the actual like national championship but we oh were okay like, so we were we were like in nola just celebrating it <laughs> i think we're at practice, um, actually. <laughs> so when when does like when does it become competition season for you guys so okay <laughs> so basically um, get in here kenna you're the one that made this all happen i just like slid in her into her dm she's probably like who the hell is this girl i'm like no i'm you guys' newest biggest fan like please come on my show like i'm obsessed with you no yeah. we're so excited to be here um but so basically we start choreography for nationals um during like football season and everything that's happening then so like I think we did it, correct me if I'm wrong, like September, August-ish this year for both dances. And then we don't start solely just focusing on like our national season until after finals are over. And that's when we go into like national <gasps> Student mode. athletes, baby, <laughs> student before athletes. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's when we spend um, our time from finals up until we actually go to Orlando on just nationals and we, um, are there every single day and sometimes we have two a days sometimes like we just are there from like an eight to four it just depends on really the day and what we need to get focused on but um we have like specific things we need to accomplish each day so we'll normally just stay until we get all of those things done and then um obviously obtaining different goals each day and just making sure we're ready to go to orlando and um while still doing basketball games and everything on top of that. But our main focus during the December slash like first half of January is just nationals. And so it's super fun and it's definitely a great team bonding experience during that entire time because you're with your best friends every day for like every single hour of the day. Like we didn't see each other for a day this week and we all like saw each other the next day. And we're like, it was so weird to not be with everyone because you literally have been with them for the past two months, every single day, every hour. But it's so much fun. So it's all worth it in the end. Oh, you guys are so cute. You're a little fam. I'm dying. Cause it's like, you don't have a hell week. You have hell month. It's like, <laughs> put your boyfriends on the shelves. It's girl time. Right. That part. I... That part. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So talk to me about what happened last year. Like why we know COVID happened, but like, how did that affect you guys and what a normal season would have looked like? <laughs> um <clears throat> well they McKenna and Brielle's class was just first coming in when it was basically it was like in the peak of everything going on so Which I give you guys so much credit for like freshman year I struggled enough just feeling like I was at home and meeting people and like finding that home away from home so like for you to do it in COVID and stick it out and like now be where you are like props to you girls because that's so much harder than like anybody who hasn't been through it thinks it is exactly yeah so they were our university was still trying to figure out some things um watching other universities about like virtual and all of those things um and we never really thought anything of nationals um just because it was kind of like a day-by-day -day situation but we all assumed we were going yeah and you um, have to train like you're gonna go of course right Right. So we've been, yeah, we were doing 
running and working out and doing all those things at home, we got the clear to be back here and we kind of had to adjust our practice um, schedule and things like that, just like all the other sports. So we would sometimes have to practice in groups and um, always we were taking like three COVID tests a week and doing all those protocols. So we were kind of just on our toes the whole entire season because things were changing so much. Um, and then we were asked to cheer or dance at basketball and football, but obviously that was different. We had masks on and that whole thing. So we, we kind of assumed everything was still going to keep going just because we were doing those things um, right. at the university. Um, and then we found out, I want to say the last week of November that it was official that we wouldn't be going um, and we didn't really get a solid reason until a couple weeks after um, while me and London kind of went and met with some administrators and did those things to try to figure out if there's a solution. You but, guys were pushing to be like, let us go, let us do something. Yeah, yeah and it, um, unfortunately they told us that we wouldn't be able to go due to the lack of um, athletic trainers that weren't at our school at the time. So we never had like a pure athletic trainer just for us in the past of Tiger Girls being 22 years old this year. Um, so we've never had that. Tiger so Girls we are were... as old as I am. <laughs> and yeah, no one's ever like... existed. Now they're like, oh, there's not enough of them. And you're like, they never existed in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So we were kind of sharing a trainer with basketball just for um, protocol things like physicals and stuff like that but we never had one at our practices all the time solely just for us so we are just kind of confused on that <laughs> part because we never had it but then we found out that we needed it to be able to do those things in COVID um, and by that time it was too late but we continued to push I mean people saw on media that we were trying to really fight for those things just on camp campus in general we were basically advocating working for the school while doing those games that's kind of our job uh, um on the school and then not being able to have our time to compete it was really really heartbreaking I mean I completely understand the frustration it's like what's the difference of you dancing at a game versus dancing for yourself and right. just to be clear nationals still happened you just weren't allowed to go yes ma'am yeah you guys are so respectful I would be yeah. like what the <laughs> your coach trained you so well I mean how like how much did that hurt like like London like seeing that your competitors could still go like were there other teams that did, opted out of going that were like your main competitors or did they still let them go so I think that some of our competitors definitely still were able to go and it definitely looked different over there too it wasn't the same by any means um, was it this is an interesting question was it the teams that are typically successful, like typically top three teams that could go, like, was there a trend of the teams that like usually win or are top three that could go versus the ones that couldn't go were like lower tier ranked typically or no? I wouldn't say there was like a big trend. Like there was like Ohio state who is a really good friend of ours, as well as like one of our competitors who do, do does really good in the jazz category and Palm, they were able to go like no problem, but then like UNLV, who's also a big competitor of ours, wasn't able to go. So I think it was a lot of like kind of what your university rules were, where you live. Like there was a lot of um, factors to it. So I wouldn't say it was like top teams were able to go. No okay. It's like it was definitely just like what your university was um, kind of going with the protocol type thing. Okay. How did it feel like seeing them still get to do it? Like, were you just like, we could have done that. We could have beat them. It was just tough just because I, it was just like a bunch of emotions, just us trying to like, honestly fight for a change to just, you know, get that um, recognition and just feel like, you know, our season um, was important as well. So I guess just throughout all of that, it was just a lot of emotions. And um, by doing all that, we made like so much progress in the program, which is um, easy to look at now, but in the moment, it was obviously tough, you know, going through that. <laughs> Day in and day out. Especially, especially when the men's teams never had to make that push or advocation for themselves. It just worked out in their favor. Right. So it works out now because we've gotten a lot of benefits from it and we've um, grown so much from that. 
So it's 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 nice now, but in the moment it was definitely a push and just girl, being- you were part of the change. Be fucking proud of yourself. I'm like these little freshmen are coming in having it easy. They're like, oh, we're we're the baddies, we're top tier here at LSU. And you're like, no, no, no. Girlie, you don't know what it was like being at the bottom. I know. Good but- for you. That's incredible. So talk to me about when you got you get the choreography. I think you said you get it like November, like the message behind this routine why you wanted to have such a strong message like how it kind of came about was it heavy coaches influence it was it you guys I think just coming from everything that we went through last year it kind of has like multiple meanings that we kind of talk about all the time like leading up to it it was we focused heavily on like we don't need all these tricks and we don't need all this Fa fa stuff like we're gonna go out there and we're gonna dance, which is what we got shot like we were taken away from a little bit last year. So like that's what we focused on. We're just gonna go do what we do best and what we've missed so much in the past year. So um, we don't need all of, like some of the people we compete against have boys on their team. We we're like we don't need all those tricks. We don't need all these extra people. Like we need these twenty people that we bonded with so hard this year that we're just gonna go out there and like put on a show for people that showed us all the love and support. Um, and I think that's definitely what we did, but definitely in the, and somewhere in there, it kind of came across just as like, we, the, the women in this circle and group, like that's what we fought so hard for. So I think the message kind of like, kind of unraveled itself, but um, I would say there was multiple meanings to it. And when we were training, we just kept, you know, reminding ourselves of that. Like we don't need anybody else's validation. We need, these 20 people, our coaches, everybody who loves and support us, that's what we need to go down there and um, to show them what we've been working for so hard for the past year. Mm -hmm. And tell me, what was, what was the name of your song? Like a boy. (laughs) Like a boy. (laughs) The first time I saw it, like you guys caught my attention was TikTok. Uh I mean, you're becoming a trend on TikTok. Yeah. How did, like, how does that feel? Like, are you guys like, oh, people are recreating our routine? Like your, your, your performance song is becoming a trend on TikTok because of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. (laughs) If we're being honest, we think it's like not funny, but we're just like, we've never been focused on. No, you're just like, we earned this. Let's go. Finally, (laughs) people are watching us and paying attention to us. Like they should have been doing all along. And also I want to say, with like what you were saying, you were like, we don't need anybody else. The whole, the message translates like so much more beyond dance too, because I'm legit sitting here thinking about like somebody who graduated and I'm just working in a workplace. And it's like trying to get like the same recognition and validation as men who do very similar things as me is so difficult. And it's like, as females, we're in this super weird position. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen that it it was like a viral TikTok and it was a girl sending an email. And she just said, I don't even know. Like, do you guys even send emails? Like, I'm like, I don't even know how to send an email. Like, I need to learn. I just graduated. I'm like, I need to learn how to be professional. But like, it's like, hi, hope you had a great weekend. Please see my fixes, blah, blah, blah. And it's like sending this email as if I was a boy, like takes away all the exclamation points, takes away, please. Here it is, period. And it's like so serious. That extra validation that we have to try to achieve because we're females is absolutely insane. And I love that. Like that's, that's one of the messages that I got in your performance this year at nationals is just like, we don't need that. Like we earn the exact same amount of respect. We deserve the exact same amount of respect as the males in our field doing the same thing. Yeah. And I think there was like some symbolism within our routine that I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have like notice while watching their team more oh oh my god the peak are you kidding you guys yes. getting a, a hat where the hell did those come from <laughs> brielle yeah. brielle please tell me <laughs> so this is a secret well, I, re- I re-watched it a thousand <laughs> times i'm like where can we tell her the secret you have to tell me <laughs> I, think, I think we should <laughs> <laughs> so this actually this didn't come about until like three weeks ago. I'm pretty sure. Like we weren't doing the hat. We were originally going to take a shirt off, but we've done that before and we weren't all really sold on it. And then actually our choreographer's mom came and she, she, the choreographer. Is the choreographer a girl or a guy? It's two girls, Sammy McFadden and Carson Rowe. I wish I was on this team. I love this 
freaking female team. Let's go. <laughs> keep going. Keep going, but sweetheart. They had introduced the hat idea and we all really loved it, but we were like, where are we going to pull out a hat? Like, it's kind of impossible. And their mom came to help us clean some of the dance. And she had this idea. I think it was her idea, but we had these like knee high, like baseball socks, we put one on and then we put one on top. So you had two socks on and the one on top has a hole through it so that it can like squeeze through. And then we would just pull the bill right through the hole and put it on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And those were the pants been... like ripped so they like they were really super cool. baggy at the bottom so it was easy to kind of pull up and just pull okay out the socks. and it was flawless like I even watched to be like oh was someone a little delayed like that would have been me that drops the hat like that freaking always... Chloe on dance moms like that would have been me <laughs> but it was flawless yeah, we always said no matter what, just pull the hat out. It doesn't matter. Rip it was literally hat. like I'm. A, I have. I have no energy left after this routine. But I'm gonna put every little ounce of my being into whipping this hat out. Are you gonna pull the hat out for sure? Yeah. Was <laughs> it? Was it in um the like pre-packing list? It's like the hat. You have the whole routine stock, and it's like the hat, the hat, the hat, the hat. Don't hat. forget the hat. Yes. <laughs> That whole section was called hat section and you knew you just had to get it out. Yeah. So does anyone see this routine before nationals or it's a complete secret? Mostly a secret. Yeah. I mean, McKenna, you can kind of talk on this further, but we, we try to keep it a, very private and then we have a show off um, a week before we leave. So videos get sent around and all those things, but it's definitely like something we don't show anyone until mm -hmm. we compete yeah we definitely um try to keep everything like even down to the costume a secret because we just want everyone to see it when it hits the stage and so like my mom uh is, lives in arizona so she couldn't come to our show off and we do our show off like about a week before we leave and so she kept telling me like i want to see a video i want to see something i was like no like you have to wait and she was like she kept asking me i was like no like you're gonna wait until we get on stage and everything but we just do it so that like we can put the final product on the stage and everyone can just see once we get to Orlando and like there's no like oh they're gonna do this oh they're gonna do that and we just can just show them everything we've been working on for so long I love that so much you're like mom you can't see what I've been working this whole entire year on <laughs> if I was your mom I'd be like fine I'll ask one of the other moms for a video <laughs> But I mean, even like just the video of your routine in Orlando, I feel like the first three seconds, everyone goes nuts. Like, was that, a, do you just have a huge LSU fan section or is it like everyone's your fan? Like everyone's like, oh, these girls are it. I think we have a really, I mean, I have been in past years, but I think we have a really strong fan base just based off our parents and things. But I think before, like, We've just always kind of been like a people's team. Like everyone around just likes us. We're respectable. We America's like team. <laughs> we always are like meeting other teams and we're really nice. Like it's not like we're like vicious, like competitors to everyone. Like we're just. Oh my God. Except when you're on the mat. When you're on the mat, you're like. Phew. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said it in the beginning. I said, I, I feel like your team's a little more. <laughs> But I think we have a really strong fan base, especially after last year, because while y'all were talking about the whole like last year thing, I was thinking, I didn't even realize this, but I think we really stood out last year, even though we didn't go because other teams couldn't go, but like we made a strong message about that. And like, we, were, we weren't going viral then, but we were going viral around here. Like everyone at school knew what we were fighting for and everyone was fighting for it with us. And I think that brought a lot of fans to us too. And then we always do like the whole hip hop category is really strong and like a mix of music. And it's always this thing. And I think this year we just like, we started off with a little walk and everyone oh, was like, I was like, <laughs> it's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was definitely something different that we've never done. Like LSU is really known for like, we're always hype, like a million mixes, tricks all over the place. Like just really, we're like, beast at hip-hop is what we usually bring over there so someone did a little flip who did the little flip oh, who was oh who was was who? yes i was like Woo! It, was just like, it was a quick one if you blinked you missed it but i was like Woo! there she is okay cheerleaders um um i am i correct on this that it's been 14 years since your team won a national championship in wow. hip-hop 
12. 12. 12. 12. But still over a decade. Mm-hmm. Has your coach ever won one or was that her first one too? That was her first. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting emotional. <laughs> what was that feeling like? Like, do they do 10th, I need seven, six, five, four, three. And then once it's two, you know, you won. Yeah. I thought we were going to pass out on that stage. I, I don't, <laughs> we were holding each other so tight. Like I was right next to London. You can kind of see us in the videos that they have, but we were like, either way, it's going to be okay. But obviously, you know, everyone wants that reward. Um, but as soon we're like the only school that has like the state in front of the university name. So we kept being like, they would say, and university of, we're like, okay, okay, we're good. We're good. So then when they, uh, second place happened, and of course they take the longest time to <laughs> announce that one. Oh, it feels like 10 years. It's like, yeah. pro- realistically, it's probably like seven seconds, but like, right. you're like, I just gained 22 more years of oh, my life waiting. Absolutely. Yeah. And they said university of Memphis. We all just, I have never felt like that in my entire life. Um, I'm going to cry. Yeah, <laughs> it was, it was just, it's different when you have a group of girls that are just so kind and hardworking and that you're, you just built this family unit. So you've been through so much together. So on that stage, when we were all holding and hugging in tight and we finally like realized that this was our moment, that's something that will, I'll never take back. That was the best moment in my life. How does it feel now? Like what's, what's the post-competition rush been like? It's been crazy. Like, honestly, <laughs> when we got on the bus, like we were obviously so hyped and then we got on the bus and like everybody kind of got quiet. I feel like we were just like taking it all in. Like, and then we, our coaches were like, it's time to set, like we did it. And we're like, oh yeah. Like, yeah. So now yeah. <laughs> starting to like coming back here, we were like, obviously over there when you're in like the dance world, everybody's like so happy, supportive, all like just crazy amounts of support over there. And um, even before we won, like just everybody's so complimentary of us. We were kind of like, oh, wow. Like, we're just so like, I don't know. We're just so humble that we're like, okay. Like, do you, even- did you like feel like you won when the routine ended? For sure. I Cause mean- you were in first place going into day two. So you were like, we just have to do exactly what we did right. with a I- little more swag and we win. <laughs> You already know. You already know. <laughs> yeah, we came back here and we had like s- people of like some ath- athletes were here, families like uh, at, were like cheering for us when we got off the bus. And we were like, that was kind of when it started. It's like, okay, now we're back to real life. Like, but it's still not real life. Like, it's still like things are blowing up on social media. Like, everything's kind of like just continuing the like media is kind of blowing up over it. So, I don't know. It's just been a crazy couple of days. Like we're like, we can't really go to school. Like we don't like <laughs> it all up. You know how so, to act right now. Like <laughs> you can tell your coach, I'm sorry, coach. I give them permission to just celebrate the next week. They, they can take this week off. You can blame me. <laughs> they keep celebrating it. So to the, you, you're back in class now. Yes, we are. <laughs> When's your parade? <laughs> we're waiting on a date we're waiting on a have, date do you have like a performance or anything like is there like a ceremony are you getting rings yes we are getting rings <laughs> I love that you better be getting rings yep that's a good one <laughs> I love it so how does it feel now have you even like thought about next year or it's just like you're still celebrating you're still on cloud nine on cloud nine (laughs) I think we're honestly just still trying to take it all in because at least to me it still doesn't even feel like it's real life like I feel like I'm living in a dream right now and it's just so crazy and I think the gratitude that we have more than anything for all the support we've received and like from people that I don't even know who are texting me and telling me like how amazing we did and everything it's just insane and like we couldn't be more grateful to like receive all the support we're receiving and even like walking around campus like people look at me and like see if I'm wearing like a tiger girls shirt or something and they'll be like congratulations and it's like crazy that like they even know and it's just so crazy but so cool and we're definitely super thankful for all of it yeah someone had to get a national championship this year (laughs) Brielle and Kenna I'm like you guys are one for one you're 100% clean (laughs) 
Is there anything like you guys want to say to people listening, like people who are want to audition, following their dreams? Like this probably was just a complete dream to you a year ago when you couldn't even compete. And like, now it's like, you did it. It's done. you you have the ring, you have the medals forever. Uh, I think the next couple of weeks are going to be just still so surreal for us. And I just like our celebrations have only just begun. I feel yes. like, so we're just going to keep riding this because it's, we're having so much fun. And like, this is like the best part of it is just soaking it all in. So I think we're going to keep doing that. And um, as for next year, I, I won't be here, unfortunately, but I can't wait for them to just continue on this path. This is like what, what this program needed to kind of get us back up there and get us to where we need, needed to be because it's been 12 years too long. And um, so it's just, it's just a validation to just keep going with this program. And um, for everybody who has been dreaming of coming to the school, even before this, I think it's just obviously accelerated from this big win. So I think you know, the demand of this team is going to just keep, keep rising, which is amazing because. Well, clearly you moved your tri up so half a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's so mm-hmm. sick though. You ended it with a bang. Like you are walking out the best way you could have possibly walked out. Yeah, are you, way. are you done dancing? Like, was that it for you? Or are we going to see London on some sidelines in the future? Stay tuned. <laughs> I'll come every time I come around my London. <laughs> Stay to what? We don't know. That's that's, <laughs> that's okay. Hard. TBD. Also, I saw this clip of you guys, your pre comp circle, the most mm. high quality clip ever. What's being filmed? Where is it going? You guys, like, am I am I kicking off your new TV series right now or something? <laughs> that would be awesome. We would love that. <laughs> entertaining for sure we're we're kind of a fun group I would say oh I, I'm like literally about to be like I need to make my first trip to LSU and come and hang out with you guys like oh, while we're out, while we're victory lapping maybe I'll come once it starts to slow down and I remind everyone I'm like no no no, we got to keep it going we got to <laughs> keep it going the only national championships in the building <laughs> well I definitely agree with you that the demand is higher I mean you guys just started a whole movement you started a whole legacy uh, proving that you can fight for what's right and earn if you don't get respect you make people respect you and I think that's what all of you did and you should all be so proud of that um I know we have babies but the older girls I hope you're hitting the freaking town all week <laughs> as you should I'm so so happy for you guys congratulations I'm literally your biggest stand ever now um catch me at nationals next year <laughs> me, Brielle, Kenna, and Kalia Please. are going to be ripping up the floor. <laughs> Tell coach I'm in. I'll bring my own hat and everything. Oh, oh we'll, we'll get you a uniform. So um, we'll get it for you. Love it. Well, girls, congratulations again. Go, Go Tigers. Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> Woo! Thank you guys so much for joining. I'm literally in love with all of you. Enjoy your celebration for the rest of your life. You deserve it. And send me a picture of those rings when we get those. Absolutely. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much again to the LSU Tiger Girls. I have the biggest crush on all of them, if you can't already tell. But thank you guys so much for watching and listening to this episode of Chicks Do. We will see you next time. Class is in session, baby. Bye.